since the wavelength at 1280 kilohertz is 234.4 meters, if we want to have 20 points per wavelength, the grid cells need to be about 12 meters in size in each Cartesian direction. But these are awfully large grid cells for modeling a crane. We could model the crane with what's called a thin wire model, but that will take extra time to develop. Instead, let's just choose a reasonable grid resolution based on the dimensions of the crane rather than on the wavelength of the signal. If we use an FTTD grid resolution, delta of, well, equal to one meter, then the effective diameter of the crane will be roughly one meter. So let's go ahead with cubic grid cells that are one by one by one meter in size. Next, we want to the source to be a plane wave. Let's say that the wave is incident on the crane straight from the left side of the grid. How can we model the plane wave source? We can't put the source along the outside of the grid right here because we will need a PML. So PML on five sides, just not on the bottom where we have the ground. And this PML will be used to absorb any scattering caused by the crane. And it doesn't make any sense to put a source inside of our PML. This means we need to figure out a way to generate a plane wave in our grid that is separate from the PML, inside, internal from this PML. We would need this plane wave source to be invisible. That is, we can't model it as a hard source because a hard source will retroreflect. We also can't model the source as a J current source because in a propagating plane wave, there aren't any charges moving. Instead, let's see if we can add a non-physical and purely numerical plane wave source. In this case, we might add in the plane wave on one side of the grid and then subtract it on the other side as it propagates through. Now, before we consider how to do this in the three-dimensional FDTD model that includes the crane, Let's start simple and figure out how we might implement this numerical plane wave in a one-dimensional grid, which will be much easier. The basic idea behind this plane wave implementation idea is that Maxwell's equations are linear, so we can split the electric and magnetic fields of our grid into incident and scattered fields. So for example, we can have the total electric field modeled in our grid can be decomposed into an incident electric field and any scattered electric field component. And we can do the same thing for the magnetic field. In other words, we'll get the same answer from our model if we use Maxwell's equations to solve directly for H total and E total, or if we use Maxwell's equations to solve for E ints, and then separately solve for the scattered fields. So E ints and H ints in one calculation, and then E scattered and H scattered in the separate calculation. And then we can add the two results together, and they should be equivalent. So how can we use this to our advantage? Spend a minute and think about how we might numerically incorporate a plane wave into a segment of our one-dimensional FDTD model. This plane wave must not reach the two edges of the grid, say over here and over here where we might want to put PML. Of course, this is not drawn to scale. So the PML, of course, we'd want that about 10 cells thick. As you develop a formulation, it might help to look at the update equations you have in a regular one-dimensional FDTD model.